Hi, welcome to the business of building applications. This is a course to help you as a manager of a small business or a team in building mobile apps for good solutions. We've got several chapters in this course that we've already covered and we are coming up here to number seven which is called hiring the team. In this video we're going to be talking about writing a job requisition and a good job posting that will get the people that fit your needs. We've got one more topic ahead of us which is called future trends. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. If any of this looks interesting to you, make sure you subscribe so that you get all of the information that will help you succeed in your venture. So in this video, we're talking about writing a job requisition and attracting the right people that will make your success a reality. So first of all, we're going to talk about the difference between an internal and an external requisition. So if you're writing an internal rec, it's because you're working at a company that needs to know these basic things. And so I probably don't need to fill out the form for you. You can see what your company would like. But I would predict that you're going to be asked several of these things. So you're going to be picking a title. You might not have any liberty on what you call that job because there's already predefined jobs. Uh, you probably have a salary band that you are offering to your employees. So you don't really know exactly uh, what your upper and lower limits are until you talk to your uh, boss and the con company controller. Uh, you will probably have some requirements that you put in there and you probably have some kind of a contract and so sometimes you see the words salary and exempt or non-exempt which is rather confusing. So exempt means they're exempt from the rules of overtime and union representation. So these are the people that you can have work 80 hours a week and not pay them any extra money. You'll probably be asked to set a budget. So how much do you expect to pay here? And of course, you're trying to find somebody that will be worth, willing to work less than that. Now, quite different is the strategy of producing an external posting because this is what your candidates will see, not the internal documents. So the differences are because there's differences in goals. The internal documentation is to meet your business goals, your HR requirements, and to budgeting probably. So when you write an external document, you have to uh, clear away any of the language that you're comfortable with as an insider of the company. And think about people that are on the street or working at other companies and they don't know anything about you. And so you're trying to target the language to the people that will likely fit the role the best. So you probably want to start off with this question about what do I really require for this person to have on the day they enter the job? And what would be nice to have? Because if you put too many requirements, of course, you're not going to have anyone actually apply. So I picked a few um, job postings out of Indeed.com that are currently being posted where I live. And you can see here that this was for a mobile developer and the company called uh, Signing Day Sports. So I don't know anything about the company other than the fact that they are looking for a mobile developer. Notice they have the qualifications listed here. So they are looking for a degree. They want some experience. And they, they mention some specific languages and frameworks that they work on. So it looks like React Native is what they're building in. So they've already decided the technology and if you don't know that technology then you're probably not a very good fit however you can see that they have familiarity as a requirement so these are the nice to haves and so things that are not necessarily uh, directly on the job and the first day so you have to distinguish between things that you need to have and then what you're willing to train them on so if you find a really good employee who has got most of the skills, then you can probably make them work. Here's another one. You notice they use the quote MUST in capital letters. So they obviously have a hard, fast rule. So this comes from the Nikola Motor Company. So this is a company in Phoenix that makes electric trucks. And I think they want to be the next Tesla. Anyway, they're looking for Android development. So specifically, you must have proven experience in Android. But then notice below, they have some other things that they probably will not get in most of their candidates. So the Android Compose Framework. So if they find somebody with the Android Compose Framework, they're going to guarantee them that they're going to have an interview likely. 
So next, let's talk about what would be beneficial in a cross-discipline candidate. So if you're looking specifically for somebody with experience in another field, this would be important to put in your job requisition in the public. So we're looking for the core developer skills here. But you might have other things, such as somebody that's worked in a travel environment before. Have Is your product geared toward travel agents or for online purchases of airplane tickets or something? then maybe you would want somebody that's worked in that field. Are you working in a medical plan? Are you Is your app serving doctors or nurses or hospitals? Then if somebody comes to you with a degree in nursing and software development, which would be a, a, quite an odd combination, that would be certainly a valuable thing. And of course, your uh, automobile mechanic would be another example. Uh, one of my students actually has these two things now and wants to find a job working where some software is in a garage environment. Military experience. A lot of students that I teach come from the military and they're trying to transition into a new career. And uh, my career advice to them is, if you are looking for a job as a software developer, why not go back to the military and work as a civilian? If you are serving military clients with your app, then maybe these are the kind of people you want to hire. People that have worked in the military and they understand it and they also know how to write code. And of course, education comes to mind is if you're trying to serve schools. So it's not really essential that your software developer is cross uh, professions, is it? Uh, you'll have to decide that. But if it is important to you, then you probably want to put it in as one of those nice to haves. How about the intangibles? So you're going to have a variety of people looking at you and they don't really know what you expect. So think of your own expectations of what your team is going to be and see if you can filter out the people that really don't matter. So for instance, are you going to be working in close teamwork with like agile systems or are you looking to hire a single loan developer? So that would be important for the people to know up front before they apply to your job. So some people have strong preferences both ways. Now the question is, what is your preference? So if you're looking for a certain person, make sure you put it in the description. Uh, what is your parameters? What are you going to expect your software developer to be? Are you going to have strict guidelines, deadlines? Are you going to have code that must be written in a right format? Do you have specific languages and frameworks that they must work with? Or are you going to be so flexible that they can choose their own technologies and their own ways of building things? So uh, if you're comfortable with either one of these, then you probably should specify in your job requisition how you want it to look. Because once again, people are going to waste your time if you offer them a job that they really don't fit with. Uh, how do you handle ambiguity? So are you going to have very detailed designs? Are you going to require people to create detailed designs? Or are you more flexible to say, let's just see how things turn out? And uh, what is the uh, what is the structure there? Be very clear about what you expect, whether it is either uh, very strong or very weak in your picture. Also, when you look at job postings, uh, I see these two uh, very often. So what kind of intangible do you have at your company? Are you called fast-paced and goal-oriented? Or are you more flexible and work-life balance is important to you? Now, honestly, I've never applied to anything that had the word fast-paced environment in it because I really think that a place like SpaceX would be an awesome experience if you have 180% of your life to give to them. However, I have other things in life that I do besides work. And so a job description that had fast-paced environment would likely just turn me off and say, I don't think I would turn out for more than a year in a high pressure system like that. So how are you going to treat your employees? Are you expecting them to work as a startup and dedicate their whole life? Or are you looking for them to produce a balance between what they do in their time away from work and what they do at your job? So whatever your expectations are, it's probably a good idea to put them right in the job posting. Now there's also some HR language that you should include in your posting. So probably required by the company policy or even state law to have non-discrimination phrases. Uh, you should have probably some company language. Uh, the 
company probably has a statement of their purpose or they have something that goes into every job description and so make sure that you include that or if you're your own company and you're a startup you might want to think about what your story is why would people want to work for you if you're the greatest thing in the world then tell us what it is so you're trying to sell yourself when you put the posting out there are you going to require citizenship or will you provide visa and sponsorship that's an HR thing how about this will remote work or on-site work are you comfortable with each so if you're comfortable with remote work you can have a wide group of talent from all over the country or even around the world and uh, if you're if you're a more face-to-face -face person then of course you're going to be limited by the people that live in your area so that's a decision that you're going to have to decide based on uh, your comfort comfort level with that that system so whatever the case is make sure that you are upfront with your employees of how you expect them to work here also think of adjacent skills so you might have your must-have list but don't be too restrictive on it because you want to have enough people that can really do the job even though they might not have the exact experience you need so a software developer with web experience can probably transition into mobile development pretty easily uh, they, it depends on how many experience years they have languages also are very similar so the syntax of Java and Swift and C sharp and C++ and JavaScript they're very similar uh, obviously those that are experts in each of these are going to argue with me to say there's huge differences but honestly these are all the uh, descendants of the original C language this these are C like languages and so if you have an expertise in one of these then you can probably pick another language that is in that same family also think of the structure of how software is designed and architect so the model view controller the MVC frameworks and the and this and the setup there are very similar no matter whether you're working in PHP or in Java or in JavaScript a lot of the strategies and designs are the same so if they've got heavy experience in a framework that's not the framework you're on they're probably going to have a lot of lessons that they can carry in and so adjacent skills work well so let's say if we had a situation where we have a react native developer that's the job we want and you get these applications that come from people with expertise in cybersecurity or a web designer or a database administrator or embedded systems or electrical engineering they'll throw them out and don't restrict them from applying if you are willing to do the training so once again think about what is essential and what can be trained I would rather pick somebody who is an expert web designer and can demonstrate a great portfolio but yet has not learned react native they've proved themselves in some other field that is adjacent and so you might want to think about inviting uh, related degrees and related experience to apply if they can prove that they're a good employee now I would also recommend that you ask people to apply with a portfolio a portfolio of course is a collection of things that you can see that people have actually done so let's take a look at an example of a portfolio and you tell me if you would like to hire this person or not so Holland a coin was one of my students for several years at Grand Canyon University and she just graduated now she created for herself a portfolio of everything that she's done in her university experience so let's take a look at her projects so she's uh, built this tool here in Java Spring so you can see that right away she knows how to program in Java and she's sorted it nicely so that you can see each of the languages that she's worked in and the projects that relate to them so let's say I want to see what she's done in Java and let's see what uh, is going on in iHeartRate so iHeartRate was something she did in the spring of 2020 you can see all the different languages that she's built with the design and the final product of what it works with so I believe this was a watch application so that an Apple watch that would uh, just record your heart rate and put it into a database and then you can have some web reports to go along with it so I recommend to all my students that they create one of these portfolios because it demonstrates in a concrete way what you know how to do so as an employer you get to know a lot about your candidates just from looking at their portfolio as a matter of fact there's not really very good information that you can gather at a job interview just by asking them questions and having them tell you generic answers 
So a portfolio is a great answer to the question is, can you build an app? Now there's probably some other things that I failed to include in how you should write a job requisition. So those of you that are looking to hire and have hired people, tell me in the comments below what has worked for you. The next video in this course is about the future trends of technology and especially with mobile. If you'd like to see the entire playlist, I'll put a link here so you can go back and catch up on all the great things about the business of running apps. Please subscribe if you like this and welcome back to class.